Hello, all. Well, this is Dr. Dave Maslach talking to you about reciprocity. The E is written with a three. And in this particular video, I really wanted to talk about the scientific research process. This is part of my thesis help series. This is going to be a really kind of basic overview of what the scientific research process is. And this video is probably geared towards those that are interested in research in some sort of way or graduate students, maybe undergraduate students, maybe it's high school students that are interested in becoming a scientist or a researcher or something like that. I'm a professor of innovation, strategy and entrepreneurship, and this is the stuff that I do every single day. So I'm just trying to put this out there to help you out and to help out other people in this particular area, because I really, truly believe in the power of reciprocity. Um, so there are basically five different steps with the scientific research process these five different steps in the scientific research process include starting from not knowing anything and going to where you're actually providing some sort of insight to other people within the scientific research process or doing similar sort of research area and you know, these steps are not all that clear cut. Often there's kind of like a mishmash of them. And sometimes you might sort of skip one, go to another one. And it's just kind of all over the place. But this is these steps to the scientific research process or the general steps that I would use um, and that I typically do on a regular basis. So the first thing that you should be doing is some sort of literature review that is just gathering data, gathering insight into what the thing, the kind of thing that you're looking at. It doesn't have to be sort of clear cut, but you're just doing a literature review of these kind of things in the different areas. It's really important to sort of have an understanding before you jump in because a lot of people have done research in, in everything. So you have to, once you find that particular area, you have to sort of understand what everybody else has done to sort of know what you can do. And the second thing is then you kind of ask yourself what a research question is. What is a specific research question you're looking for? What is the thing that you're actually really trying to, to nail down? And often one and two kind of iterate for a while. You're kind of having an idea. This is what I want to explore. And then you go do this literature review and find out somebody's done it. And then you go and to refine it. And it's this kind of back and forth thing. Um, and, and that happens, you know, that might happen over a course of, of a couple of months where you're sort of thinking about that. And it might even happen a, a lot more. And it's really kind of this refinement process that happens along the way. And that is, that's totally normal, especially if you start getting feedback from other people. Uh, it's going to be really normal to understand what the research question is and to iterate back and forth because you just don't know everything and you don't have time to sort of understand everything um, jumping into something. But you should try to learn as much as you possibly can. Um, the third step, ooh, th a third step is to actually go through and test it somehow, test that research question. Now testing, I'm using this really broadly because there's a lot of different ways that you can test something. Um, there's not just kind of like the sort of standard way of doing an experiment, but there's like you can do sort of qualitative stuff with going and asking people about something. You can, um, you know, you can just observe things. You can, you know, there's just so many different ways and it's really hard to sort of know what testing the research question is, but that's kind of generic way to sort of think about it. You're just kind of testing whatever you're trying to explore. Sometimes you're even trying to dream up research questions from the testing that you're doing. That's kind of more on the sort of, uh, on the qualitative side that you would do that, but that is kind of the normal process. Um, the fourth thing that you can do or that you do is end up sort of looking at the results of the test that you have and then drawing some sort of conclusions from that. You know, whether your hypothesis that you sort of established previously uh, to support the research question, whether that was, you know, were they, were, were they supported, were they not supported, um, what's going on with the particular data, you know, you might do what is called post hoc analysis, where you kind of dig down and try to understand what's really truly going on, particularly if a idea was not supported or looking through there's there's a lot of ways that you can sort of dig down but it's just kind of getting the basic understanding of what's going on and you're just trying to draw kind of really cut and dry conclusions at that or, or inferences at that moment and whether something is happening or not and the fifth thing that's really important is to draw implications based on these conclusions and these implications are really about just informing and letting other people know about what you did and sort of steering 
driving the process, the research process going forward for other people and saying, this is this is kind of an interesting area. Maybe we should look at this. Maybe we should not look at this. This is way that I think or we think that the, the research should go is go in this particular direction. So it's kind of the standard sort of scientific research process. There's you know, there, there, there's refinements and there's lots of different things that are going on. But basically, that's really what you're doing is starting off sort of at the wide end of a funnel. And you can imagine a funnel, the wide end of a funnel. Where you don't know what's really what you're doing. And then you sort of refine as you go to figure out the research question. And then you go a little bit further and to sort of test the research question. And then you go even a little bit further, draw some sort of conclusions from that and inferences. And then you go even further. Um, and at that point, you can kind of go wider again and, and draw implications to different areas of research that other people are working on that you think might the results that you have might inform what they're doing. And that's really what you do. And you do that over and over and over and over and over again. Um, it's not as clear cut as what I'm saying, but it's really just kind of that is really what the process is. But you do that over and over um, repeatedly and you do it over long periods of time. And scientists will work at stuff for years and years and years. It's not unusual to work at something for 20, 30, 40 years at a particular topic that and you're trying to gather what's going on within that particular topic. So that's it. Hopefully you like this video. Um, if you want to check out the reciprocity project, check it out um, as well as yeah. Thank you so much. Do an old um, thumbs up and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.